And now it is time for the portion of Liberty Nation Radio, which we entitle Talkin' Liberty, a natural segment for a show on liberty. It's when we examine threats and promising developments regarding your individual liberty with our regular contributor, constitutional lawyer, and LibertyNation.com legal affairs editor, Scott Cosenza. Hello, Scott. Hello, Tim. I'm so glad the the temperature is up to about 8 degrees now. We have to change everything about our lives in order to combat the threat of global warming, Tim. That's the, the important takeaway Actually, the, here. the best part of this is that we're, we're actually hearing from various cli- climate change alarmists that, well, this is exactly what you're supposed That's to right. accept. Because you know why? Because it's hot in Australia. So you're getting extreme heat in Australia and right. record-breaking <laughs> century-high cold in the U.S. Century-low cold, right. Well, century-high, eh, whatever. The argument I heard about this, and I think uh, I can't claim credit for myself. I don't know who made it, but they said— I would be more apt to believe this global climate change is uh, contributes to both of these things if there was anything approximating a reasonable prediction about this weather event, right? So that would indicate they had some real sense of where the climate was heading. But instead, you just get this anything as a anything post, falls as a into it, yeah. though, as a postscript, right? I, I, where's, I, I, where's the prediction ahead of time? Al Gore is increasingly looking like a climate change moderate. He's going to uh, be a climate change today's. billionaire in a few months, Tim. I mean, he... Uh, you mean he's not there already? Well, maybe he is, Well, he has uh, to pay a lot of that to Tipper, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. We digress massively here. There was a documentary one time a few years ago called Get Me Roger Stone. Thoroughly so, entertaining. So, so apparently Robert Mueller and his henchmen <laughs> like saw that. Right. But he, I, I can imagine Mueller saying uh, to Andrew Weissman, his top henchman, right. his lieutenant, get me Roger Stone. And they sure did, Scott. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, Tim. That's an interesting lead-in that you chose to this story because one of the most profoundly disturbing aspects of it is the CNN scoop. And what many people, myself included, to believe to be the CNN tip-off, which is to say that uh, Roger Stone's house uh, was raided uh, at about 5.50 a.m., I believe. And the only uh, the only group that was there to cover it live uh, journalistically was CNN. And we believe it was uh, a tip that so the how special, do you, how special do you... counsel's office or the U.S. attorneys or the prosecutor. But here's the, here's the reason why I say I think it was interesting at your lead-in. The producer for the CNN segment that uh, of the Roger Stone mm-hmm. uh, raid is a former FBI employee, uh, according to Roger Stone himself. And so the idea that that person, I mean, it just, you know, who are you going to believe? You, you mean your you, own lion eyes or, you, uh, or the truth, You mean right? they don't stake out his house round the clock Daily, all yeah. the time? I mean, well, they have the a other, big staff. And the other thing, apparently, <laughs> there were police at either end of the block, and apparently, like, you or I per- couldn't have gotten onto that block. So it was sort of doubly um, in favor of CNN and, of course, vo- violative of the secret grand jury process and you know numerous other confidentiality rules. A- again, all to accrue to the political uh, damaging of President Trump. And so that is what is so profoundly disturbing. We have elements of the government, whether they're Mueller himself or his lieutenants, or others high in the FBI or the U.S. Attorney's Office who are using that office that we pay handsomely for in order to punish Donald Trump politically. And there's and that nothing is, that it there seems to be nothing anybody can do to stop them except for Trump uh, firing Robert Mueller. That's, that's certainly the, one of the ways. Lindsey that, Graham did, Tim, uh, issue a series of tweets. It's so funny how we talk about politics these days, but he tweeted out the contents of a letter that he sent to the FBI asking for a specific uh, responses to questions about why the decision was made to send a helicopter, a SWAT team, and a pre-dawn raid over a person who was represented by counsel and had no history of violence nor inclination to it. So uh, hopefully we'll get some answers at some point in the future. Well, all these crimes that he's charged with occurred after the Mueller investigation started. They're all process crimes. They're not violent crimes. And yet the SWAT that was pulled off by the police by most counts more than two dozen law enforcement uh, officers, mm-hmm. including amphibious, amphibious. Well, certainly, you have to uh, for for the for the, the aquatic uh, for the water behind right. his house, for uh-huh. the pond or the lake or whatever right. behind his house. 
But this, <clears throat> I mean, this was a guy who who's supposedly or is charged with process crimes, and yet the SWAT team that went in there, Scott, it was almost indistinguishable from what you'd see in Venezuela. This is, so there's two things going on. One of them is this punish Donald Trump and his allies thing that I think is clearly on display. And Roger Stone, in particular, has a history of kind of thumbing his nose at establishment. And so uh, even more so than any other sort of random supporter of the president, I think that perhaps the other side would be rife to kind of thumb their nose back at him with a raid that uh, he claims they spent, um, I think he said, 13 hours in his house. They didn't leave until 7 p.m., and they set up tables and inspected and searched everything in the house during that time. As if he was dealing um, drugs or something. And wouldn't let his wife, yeah. for instance, access her electronic devices uh, that we're all sort of married to. You think about what, what it would be like. you got somebody in your house. You're subject to a search warrant. You can't move. You can't leave. And you can't access your electronic device. It's 13 hours. What's that day like for you? Well, it's, well, sending, a, it's sending a clear signal that they're... You know, they're going to use every ounce of intimidation available yeah. to essentially, Scott, a fourth branch of government, because they're, this, this is proof positive that there are no limitations placed well, on, wh- on what this special counsel can do. I agree. And, and so there is one other factor that can sort of go in the defense of the FBI in this instance. And it's a factor that we've talked about before, Tim, and it goes against the liberty of all Americans, which is that these militarization of law enforcement, including federal law enforcement, takes place every day in America, mm-hmm. across the country. And these sorts of militarized style raids are now, I don't know if, uh, uh, I'm trying to use the right word here. It's not necessarily an everyday thing for every department, but it's very, very common that for nonviolent people, they will use these warrant squads. They get a lot of press. They get a lot of attention. They're sexy. Uh, you know, they're sort of, by the way, the, the people who are, you know, recruited to go on them, it's all gung-ho. I remember uh, an old school sheriff once said, uh, you should ask who wants to be on the SWAT team, and whoever holds up their hand, they should not be allowed uh, <laughs> on right, the SWAT team. Right. But unfortunately, all the hand raisers, they're on the teams these days, and, and, and many Americans have to suffer a fate similar to Roger Stone, albeit for different motivations. I was walking around with the sound off on the TV when this Roger Stone SWAT team arrest uh, happened, and I looked at it, Scott, literally, and I said, Oh, maybe they're going in after the Venezuelan president, really Maduro. Thought, wow. I really yeah. thought it was Venezuela. Yeah. Because you're talking about going in, guns are blazing, a helicopter, mm-hmm. automatic weapons, amphibious units behind the house. Right. I mean, imagine what they would have done if this guy had committed a real crime. Mm-hmm. No, leftists are very are busy uh, celebrating Roger Stone's raid yeah. and uh, celebrating Maduro's continued uh, presence in office there. All right, we got time for one more story. We can either do Canada DUI or we can do the Baltimore DA. Let's stick with Baltimore. Keep it keep okay. it local. In Baltimore, Tim, the district attorney Marilyn Mosby has said that she will no longer prosecute marijuana crimes. I think this is a huge deal. So many of uh, you know, it's sort of in the air. This sort of uh, the policing that poor brown people get basically in a daily, you know, and. Where the rubber meets the road for so much of that is drug prohibition and right. marijuana prohibition right. specifically. So I think it's a great thing that these people will no longer have to have significant parts of you know sort of damage to their lives because they want to use cannabis. Now the sort of uh, it's not all sunshines and smiles. The police have not signed on to this. So uh, Ms. Mosby is a elected representative and she's responding to her you know what she thinks is the benefit of the constituency but the police don't work for her they work for the mayor and the police have said have not said they will so what likely happened to him is you know don't go to baltimore and think you can walk down the street and not get arrested for marijuana you can but you will not be prosecuted unless you have demonstrable evidence that you're dealing which is to say baggies and scales and that sort of thing for personal use in baltimore though you may get arrested, but you will no longer be prosecuted for marijuana. But part of the Baltimore DA's uh, announcement here is that uh, she's going to try to vacate 5,000 convictions. So it's it's going to be retroactive. It may be. I, I mean, this is what that, she's trying to do. Yes. So so uh, as, as I understand it, I have a limited understanding of Maryland post-conviction relief, to be sure. 
uh, is that it's an uphill battle for that to happen. But it was not an uphill battle for her to stop, uh, you know, effective immediately any current and future prosecution. So you can bank on that uh, for the time being anyway. The 5,000 in the past, we don't know. 30 seconds on Canada DUI. Canada passed a law that's just now sort of coming into uh, the enforcement mechanisms are just now being populated, and we're now just sort of hearing about it. Tim, the DUI law in Canada was changed to where this year police have to have no cause at all to stop you and demand that you submit to a sobriety test. The, the story I, I learned about was a man going to a recycling center with some empty beer bottles, and the cop said, oh, you must be a big drinker. Uh, let me test you for your sobriety with no no cause. So I talked to a Canadian citizen today about this law and asked how it might be overturned, uh, knowing little about our the governance of our country, of our neighbor to the north, like so many Americans. He said it's probably going to take a year more uh, if it does get overturned for this law to go away. I thought the amazing part is that it requires drivers to be sober for two hours after they finish That's driving another, yes. so they can follow you into your home. That's right. Uh, if they saw that you were driving, but they didn't stop you. Or somebody else calls and says you were driving erratically. So you're right. on your way home from work. Somebody calls and says you were driving erratically. You get in the door and you have a couple scotches on an empty stomach. Now you have to, to blow a breathalyzer test. This is definitely more of a threat than a promising development Watch for individual out, liberty. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Tim. This program, Liberty Nation Radio and LibertyNation.com's own podcast, The Uprising, are available to you on demand at LibertyNation.com and from fine podcast providers everywhere. So that is it for this week, but we'll be back at you next week, same time, same station. Till then, this is Tim Donner saying stand up for liberty. And we'll see you next time on Liberty Nation Radio.